Elvis Presley, My Fair Lady, Dwight D. Eisenhower signs the Federal Aid Highway Act. The year is 1956. In this, Mercury Montclair was brand new. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that puts the spotlight on the cars that are not often talked about. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are frankly being forgotten. We dive in deep with specs, but most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. The 1956 Mercury was offered in four series. Medalist was in the basement, followed by Custom, followed by Monterey, Montclair at the top. Mercury would offer the Montclair from 1955 to 1960, took a bit of a break, came back in 1964 through 68 in five generations, 1956 is in the first generation, which had a production run from 55 to 56. Could be had as a two-door coupe, four-door sedan, two-door convertible, four-door hardtop, and two-door hardtop. 1956 is more or less a carryover body design that started back in 55 with various changes. 55 on top, 56 on the bottom, starting in the front. I absolutely love a mid-50s Mercury, and I'm always, I was always a huge fan of this design. Before continuing, did you ever notice how similar the 55 Mercury looks to, say, the Lincoln Premier? I, I know they're roughly the same body shell and the 56 Packard. These three cars look very similar in the front, in my opinion. Plymouth Savoy is another one from 56 that this car looks like. Anyway, back to the comparison between the 55 and the 56. Starting in the front, the biggest change to the front from what I can see is the logo on the nose of the car is different. Mercury is spelled out on the bottom of the hood on the 55, whereas on the 56, spelled out in the bumper. The 56 has finer grill bar accent at the top of the bumper. The 55 is more spaced out. Looking at, but the more I look at these bumpers, the more I notice that they are two different designs. Moving to the side, it's an easier way to tell the 55 from the 56 from the side profile is the 56 has a two-tone or could be had in a two-tone color scheme, whereas the 55 did use two-tone colors, but they used a different color on the roof as opposed to on the side of the body like it's being shown on this 56. Montclair script is in the same location, just above the wheel well, but that circular ornamentation, I'm not really sure what you would call that, is in line with the trim molding on the 56 and above the molding on the 55. The 56 belt line trim dips down, whereas on the trim on the 55 is straight across. For the most part, until it gets to the rear, the 55 trim runs at the bottom and then out the back, whereas the 56 trim runs off the top. Moving to the rear view, better look at the different trim styles. Trunk logos are different. Bumpers look the same. Rear lights and lenses, as well as bezels, appear to be different. Looking at the bumpers closer, it looks like the bumpers on the 56 appear to have exhaust ports in them not found on the 55. Getting inside, looking at the dash, everything looks the same. Side note, I've seen both with the steering wheels having a full horn ring as well as half a horn ring for both the 55 and 56 model years. Which one do you like better in the comment section below? Let's talk specs, 206.4 inches long, 76.4 inches wide, 56 and a half inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 118 inches. It weighs 3,615 pounds, price, $2,760, which is equivalent to you spending $30,782.42 in the year 2023. Total 1956 Mercury production was 327,943 units, of which total Montclair was 91,434 units. And of that number, two-door hardtop was 50,562 units. Moving on to engines. 312 cubic inch displacement wide block V8, 5.1 liters. It was available in two flavors. You could get the low compression version or the ultra high compression rating version. 
The low compression rating version made anywhere between 210 to 220 horsepower. It depends on what transmission you got. 210 with the automatic, 220 with the manual, 320 pound-feet of torque at 2200 RPM. Compression was 8.9 to 1, 5 main bearings. The super high compression ratio bumped compression up to 9 to 1 and bumped horsepower up to 225 horsepower. When backed with a three-speed manual transmission, this is the lower compression of the two engines. Zero to 60 could be had 9.1 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 109 miles per hour, while achieving an average fuel economy rating of 12 miles to the gallon. 1956 Mercury options and features. The biggest feature for 1956 was Mercury went 12-volt electrical. The rest of it's pretty standard. Power steering, air conditioning, automatic self-lubrication system. I saw conflicting information. That's why I didn't list this one as part of an engine group. But you could get two four-barrel carburetors, which would boost power output to 260 horsepower. Transmissions, three transmissions on offer. You had the three-speed manual, the three-speed automatic, Merc-O-Matic, and the Touch-O-Matic overdrive. All right, let's talk styling. Chrome, there's tons of chrome on this car, especially the front bumpers. Look at how it's textured. Interesting turn signal indicator placement. Look at all of the different layers that are going on with this front bumper design. Mercury stamped into the bumper. Headlights sit further back than they do on most other cars. It almost looks like the headlights are sitting in almost like a cave. The hood is very smooth with an ever so subtle center line leading up to the hood ornament. Look at this line on the nose of the hood coming down the side. I personally love the two-tone colors. The mirror on this one is mounted on the hood, just forward the windshield. I absolutely love how the stainless looks against this color. Also, this car has drip rails that run the whole length of the car. Here's a better look at the trim situation. Just look at the fender bulge. Here is my hand for reference. Also, notice it's offset. Notice the bottom design doesn't have textures like the top design does. This line starts on the top of the fender bulge and goes the whole way to the end of the car. Look at these tail lights. Look at how they're designed. Backup lights are mounted in the bottom. Lots of textures going on, especially with this rear bumper design. Love how it says Mercury right there. This is Craig Gas filler door. It's the keyhole. Just look at how thin this door is. Look at all of the different colors and textures and materials going on. This feels like a brushed aluminum, as well as down here. It's all nice and textured. Vinyl in the center. Armrest, as well as door handle to pull the door shut. Door handle to get out, vent window, operates like that. There's the window crank for the big window. Notice it's all trimmed out. Look, it even has a nice channel here so that it can fit over top of the one that goes over there. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, high beam switch, brake, gas pedal. This is the handbrake. Just take a look at this interior. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Windshield wipers, as well as the wash feature in the center. Two sliders, one on the left controls the air. The one on the right controls temperature. Increase temperature by sliding the lever down. Headlights, I apologize, this car has the full horn ring, so you can't see all of the gauge binnacle at one time. Notice, Three tiers or levels, amp meter, gasoline gauge, oil pressure, coolant temperature, all gauges, which is totally nice. Speedometer in the middle tier, turn signal indicators as well as odometer in the center. Drive modes read park, reverse, neutral, drive low, ignition, another set of sliders. This one controls the fan blower speed on the left, air control on the right, lighter, radio, clock. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. Up above, there are sun visors and they look like this. They're a bit on the slender side. There is a nice rear view mirror there in the center as well as another sun visor for the passenger. 
underneath the steering wheel there's plenty of room to put your hand between your crotch and the steering wheel bottom if you're if you wear size 36 pants you'll fit in this car just fine let's talk about the seats the seats are super comfortable in this car i've never been in a 50s car where the seats were this comfortable especially from ford very very nice plushy seats on to the glove box test here is our test subject here is my hand for reference here is the glove box in question and i can't do the glove box test because there is a radio in there but it's actually a pretty small opening i don't know if it would fit in there anyway there's the ashtrays right there coming to the rear section so that's how much space there is in the back. This is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the color to glass ratio. It's nice and airy in this car. Huge wraparound rear window. And that's what visibility looks like out the rear window from the back seat. There is a nice armrest, center armrest in the center. It's just a bit on the slender side. Here is what the seat profile looks like. It is a bit upright and the back does dip down quite a bit in the rear. Nice armrest as well as textured aluminum panels. That's what that looks like. An ashtray as well as armrest. It's a nice armrest. The windows operate like this. Isn't that cool? There are creature comforts such as coat hooks. There isn't a dome light in the center. There is another coat hook over there. There's a light. It looks like that's a light right there. In this situation, there isn't that much space for a full-size adult in the back seat. Under the hood sits a 312 Y-Block V8 glass windshield washer bottle, power steering, power brakes. This one's been upgraded with power brakes but not only that but the dual master cylinder slender battery on the positive side i don't know about you but to me this is one of the best looking mercury's from the 50s if not ever this might be the best looking mercury ever made in my opinion great visibility you don't see that many of these around don't laugh but these give me lionel train vibes this car in early nashes or maybe it's old tin toys i don't know maybe it's just me this car has a super nice dash as well as super comfortable seats. Against it, some trim parts are really hard to find. The rear, the rear seat isn't big enough for a full-size adult. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you have a car that you would like featured on this channel from your personal collection, be sure to reach out to me in one of these various ways. You can either shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook, you can reach me by sending me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of this support. And until next time, toodaloo! If I were a rich man, a very, 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 very nah. If I were a rich man, a very, 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 very dumb. And if I were a rich man, a very, 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 very dumb.